like me, I'm sure you've wasted hours on Porsche's car configurator picking your perfect 911. On this week's track battle, we're going to play that game for real with this, a Carrera 2S, which is rear wheel drive. It's got a PDK transmission, PCCB brakes and sport suspension. And here we've got a Carrera 4S, so four wheel drive, but this time with a seven speed manual box, regular suspension, it's got a rear diff and it's got PCCB brakes. Which one's quickest and which one's most fun? Let's find out now. So we're in the C4S and this car has got some pretty special options from from Porsche's equipment list. Uh, we'll start off with the engine. It's got the power kit, uh, which is pretty chunky. It's nearly 10,000 uh, pounds, and you get an extra 35 horsepower or so. Um, so about 430 horsepower. It talks about the same, 325 foot-pounds. It's got standard suspension, regular seven-speed box. Uh, it's also got the regular mechanical diff in the back, but with Porsche torque vectoring. So. It's a nice spec because you've got a bit more power, but you haven't spent a fortune on suspension. It's also got PCC pre brakes. So you normally wouldn't pick a Carrera 4S as a track car, but 911s have changed so much in the last few years. And these conditions actually play into its hands because they're pretty greasy and not very nice. As you can see, it likes to slide. So the joy of this C4S is it retains 911 weight distribution, but it has that bit more traction to play with and balance the car. You can't say that's not fun, can you? The PCCB brakes give you that extra bit of resistance to fade help a lot on the road too but just for wheel control and ride comfort strangely just with a lack of mass the one thing you need to watch with this C4S is the way it initially transitions into a slide it does tend to go quite quickly and probably further than you expect it would but once you can balance it <laughs> You can do ridiculous things with it because it's kind of holding itself at the optimum slide angle with the help of the front front axle. <laughs> this is such a laugh. The conditions are helping, admittedly. So we'll calm things down, see if I can keep it in a straight line and see what kind of a lap time it'll do. And as I've mentioned, the conditions are about as slippery as they're going to get. It's raining and cold, but it's not properly chucking it down. So it's hard to find a balance in the car to get it to either understeer consistently or oversteer. And you need a little bit of both, really, understeer to stabilise your corner entry and then oversteer once you get on the power, but it feels really good, actually, for a car that's quite a sensible spec in terms of suspension, you know, something you could quite happily live with as a daily driver. It's pretty damn special. And it makes you wonder, you know, you need a level of commitment to own a GT3. And to be fair, this is GT3 money with these options. Oh, that sounds pretty horrible. And it really thrives on track in a way that I didn't expect a four wheel drive. 991 to do at all would be really fascinating to see how it compares with the C2S which has got more aggressive suspension 
setup. The same brakes, a little bit less weight. Come out to last corner, don't slide too much. And across the line now. The C4S excels in the wet conditions, combining terrific traction and brilliant handling balance to post an impressive time of 1 minute 31.1. So we swapped from the C4S into the Carrera S. The engine spec is the same in this car, so this has the power kit as well. So 435 horsepower, PDCC Sport suspension, so it's significantly lower and pretty stiff. I mean, it's proper GT3 style suspension. It's got 20 inch rims, which the C4S had. It's got PCCB brakes, which the C4S had. So pretty similar, but obviously we've just got rear wheel drive. The conditions have got a little bit worse, if anything. So it's going to be interesting to see how a rear wheel drive 911 copes. We'll have a bit of a hoon and see whether it's more fun or trickier to drive than the four wheel drive. Straight, straight away, there's more it does more extreme things. It understeers more to start with, and then it breaks into oversteer and takes longer to come back. But with PDK, which is another option on this car, you can make up shifts in the middle of the corner. But it also means if you want to use the torque in a higher gear, you get beyond a certain point in the throttle travel and it kicks down into the lower gear which is not always what you want particularly on some of the corners you could do in second but maybe you want to try and do in third so that's a, a bit of a frustration otherwise though you can't quite beat a 911 for that sweet spot when you find the sweet spot it's just brilliant fun Okay, so we've had a bit of a slip and a slide around. Now it's time to try and string together a tidy lap in the Carrera S at a very, very, very slippy Bedford Autodrome. At the moment, I think my money is on the C4S, which it wouldn't have been before we started the day. But it's just the neater, more precise car, and certainly in, the, in these conditions. The C2S is great fun, but it's pretty snappy, and you need to be confident with it. <laughs> in a way that the C4S, it looks after you, it flatters your driving. Really have to hustle this. Right, try. Oh. You need, oh, see, it just transitions too much and you can't get on the power. Right, it's a tricky chicane coming up. And then the two big quick corners. That turns in pretty well, but then you get on the power. <laughs> you just have to dance on the throttle just to get the nose in. Last corner. Oh, come on. Oh, what time's it done? I've got no idea. With rain falling harder, the rear wheel drive Carrera S was always going to struggle but even we're surprised at its deficit to the C4S. A best of one minute 37.9, putting it almost seven seconds shy of the all-wheel drive car. The Carrera S would certainly claw much of this time back in more favorable conditions, but still the C4S has proved its on-track metal in fine style. A rematch in the dry? Watch this space. So that's the end of another Evo track battle. Don't forget to subscribe to Evo TV if you want to see some more. And if you've got any ideas for track battle pairings, then do comment below and we'll do our best to get the cars together so you can see how they compare. 
and we can have some fun on your behalf. Mm -hmm.